Okay, today I'm going to be talking about LE factorization, and um, it's a pretty simple concept to get. First, I would make sure that you know how to row reduce. Uh, if you get this far into linear algebra, it should come pretty naturally to you, and uh, also understand the difference between reduced echelon form and echelon form, and this will be pretty easy. Um, so, basically, we're going to be talking about what... Uh, LE factorization is. And uh, LE factorization is simply a way to make solving linear equations, inverting matrix, and computing a determinant much, much easier. Uh, today we're going to be focusing, in, instead of uh, worrying about inverting a matrix and computing a determinant, we're going to be talking about how it's easier to solve linear equations, especially when you're dealing with uh, big matrices and really complex numbers. Well, what do you do? First, you row reduce A to get U, and uh, then you just calculate L. Uh, L, you don't even really have to calculate, you just have to look at what uh, matrix operations you perform to get U, and that's how you get L. But I'll explain that in a little bit. Uh, some important things to remember though are U is just the echelon form of A. If you know how to row reduce, you just reduce A to echelon form, not to reduce echelon form, and that is your U value. Um, make sure when you're doing this, though, you do not row exchange. If to get uh, U to or to get U into echelon form, you need to row reduce or I mean uh, row exchange at any point then you cannot factorize what uh, matrix A is. So then none of this even matters to you. You're going to have to go and do it the hard way. Um, also know that L is going to be a lower triangular matrix. Just think of L, lower, we'll start with L, and uh, U is upper, U, U. See, it's pretty easy. Um, is an upper triangular matrix. If you don't know what one of those looks like, just understand that a uh, lower triangular matrix, everything above the diagonal is going to be all zeros. And with an upper, it's the opposite. Everything below the diagonal is going to be zeros. So let's take a look at this. Here I have an example. This is just telling you how to get uh, U. And here... If you know what you're doing, uh, we have a matrix A here, and here's the row reductions that I performed to get to our uh, end result U. And first I did uh, row 1 divided by row 3, uh, got this part, and then I decided to do negative 6 divided by row, uh, no, negative 6 times row 1 plus row 2 into row 2, and negative 9 times row 1 plus row 3 to get this. Went down here, ran out of room, and here you have row 2 divided by 10 to just simplify to get that, make it a little bit easier, and then negative 5 times row 2 plus row 3 to get uh, our upper triangular, you know, upper triangular matrix, uh, which is U. So L is the only thing that's even a little bit tricky to get. Um, just Remember the row operations that we performed to get it. Um, so when you get L, you do already have some knowns. And we'll look at this first. I'll, I'll kind of cover that up, even though you already saw it. But we already know, since it is a lower triangular matrix, we're going to have a 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. These are the only mysteries, everything below the diagonal. To get those, we're going to look at what we did in the previous operations to get U, uh, and that's how we're going to figure it out. So, first we want to think, what did we do to get rid of the number that was originally there? Well, if we look back here, uh, when we eliminated this 6, which is in that mystery spot, uh, we multiplied uh, row 1, times negative 6 plus row 2. And also, I might as well do it because we did it in the same kind of step. What did we do here? That's another one of those that we weren't sure about in L. Uh, this one we did negative 9 times row 1 plus row 3. Well, 
as it comes out to be, those are two of the mystery numbers that are there, 6 and 9. And the way I like to think about that, I'll, I'll kind of reference this again, I think of trying to make this a 1, which we did uh, during here. And then you do 6 divided by the number that was used to eliminate it, which is 6. And then 9 divided by the number that was used to eliminate it, which is 9. And, of course, those happen to be the numbers. Now, what was used to get rid of this one right here? Well, we did simplify it here, but we did not get it to be a 0 at this point. So we actually are going to worry about uh, this transition right here. First, we simplified this to a 1, and then uh, just making it easier again. And we did negative 5 times row 2 plus row 3, and that got this to be a 0. So again, you can think about it the same way. What number was used to eliminate it is going to be divided by the number that was eliminated. And what would you think it would be? Of course, it is a 5. So this right here is our final L for the original matrix A that we were looking at. So, pretty simple. Um, now, let's look at how this actually helped us by solving a linear equation. Uh, first, you should know, this is the whole basis of what it's about. Um, Ly is going to equal B, and Ux is going to equal Y. So let's assume that we already we have a matrix A and we already know B. Well, using what we just discussed, you can figure out your L and U, and you know your B. So to find Y, which can be used here to get that final thing X is what we're actually looking for, you can augment a matrix uh, with L and then B, and that will get you your identity matrix augmented with Y. Then, since you have Y now, you can augment that with U. And that would get your identity matrix augmented with X. And this, when you're dealing with such big numbers, it would kind of be really um, silly of you to try to get the inverse matrix uh, A and multiply it by B to get X. So, you're going to be saving a lot of time, especially when you get into more advanced calculus. Um, or at least so I've been told. So, Let's look at this example. Uh, well, first we have, I, I didn't put it, but this is going to be our L, which I just kind of made up. Um, and then this is going to be our Y value. Oh, uh, I'm sorry about that, B value. We're going to be looking for the Y. Well, when we augment it, we do our math out. Row 1 plus row 2, negative 2, row 1 plus row 3, and 3 row 1 plus row 4. You get this came down here, 3 times uh, row 2 plus row 3, negative 10 row 3 plus row 4, um, we'll get you this. Again, you simplify with a 2 row 3 plus row 4. And here we already see that we have our identity matrix augmented with, what is it? Our y. So our y value comes out to be negative 2, 1, 13, and 8. Well, now... That isn't really what we're looking for, we're just one step in the process of getting what we really want, which is x. And that I put here. Again, it's just a matter of all row reducing, just understanding what you're doing with this, so really have a firm grasp of knowing how to row reduce before you try to conquer this process. Here we have a u. Um, augmented with the y value that we just got. It's the same numbers, negative 2, 1, 13, 8. And first I just simplified it to make all these in the diagonal 1 to make our math a lot easier. So I just did row 1 divided by negative 1, row 2 divided by negative 2, row 3 divided by negative 1, row 4 divided by negative 1. And that's going to influence all those. And um, just kind of swap some signs real quick. Here I decided to do row 4 plus row 2 row 4 plus row 3, and 2 row 4 plus row 1. Again, simplify it a little bit. Uh, half row 3 plus row 2, 2 row 3 plus row 1 gives you this. And 
eventually after doing uh, row 2 times 7 plus row 1 you get this big number and you get x as negative 189, negative 19, negative 21, and negative 8. So that's pretty simple stuff if you ask me. Uh, this is going to be tremendously easier than trying to compute again that um, inverse a. So I guess I could write that out for you. Oh, wait, where's my marker? x would equal your inverse of a times b. And since we already knew b and that, it might seem easier. It might seem easier with smaller numbers. But again, when you're working with bigger ones, this is going to be a lot more confusing to try to calculate uh, an x value. So uh, I hope this video helped. If you have any more questions, feel free to comment on the video and I will try my best to explain what my thought process was. Okay, have a great day.